us some insight. Why is it that Italians are so passionate about all things um, Italian and especially luxury items like your fashion, your food, your fragrances? Why, why is that, do you think? Um, I think we need to go back a long way because we've been very blessed and we, you know, we've been surrounded by, by beauty since uh, the, the dawn of ages. So I think that has really helped as inspiration to every one of us to, you know, keep continue doing beautiful things. I'm Renee Leith Manos. Welcome to this podcast. Where to from here? So, buongiorno. I'm uh, Luca Virgilio. I'm sitting here in Rome at the Hotel Eden, uh, part of the Dorchester collection, uh, talking to uh, René Limanos about the wonderful world of uh, travel. Tell us, Luca, how are things in Rome and how has it been over the summer and into the autumn there? Uh, I, I have to say, and uh, you know, there's a very uh, positive vibe around. We enjoy the I mean, a very good summer. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate, of course, but it has been progressively better every month. Uh, to start with, many Italians decided to rediscover Italy. And then as uh, along the way, when all the travel restrictions were lifted, we started seeing a, a strong influx from uh, foreign travelers. So if we need to draw a line, I would have to say it has been uh, definitely positive. Uh, progressively positive. We, we're not, uh, probably for city hotels, we're not because we rely on other markets, not just the leisure market, but the business traveler, uh, conference, etc., which maybe are a bit lacking behind. But if we look at the whole picture, I have to say uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of positivity. And finally, of course, we're putting a few pennies in the pocket rather than, you know, losing, putting them on the table every month. How do you feel about the future of business travel? Um, I mean, I, it will be reshaped. I think that scenario has been reshaped and rethought of. But at a certain level of the business traveler, I don't think it will change because people will still want to make deals, uh, shaking hands, uh, face to face. Uh, so we are seeing that. Maybe, you know, there will be, you know, the big conference will be kind of reshaped, rethought of until everything has been kind of cleared and off the air. But uh, at least the type of business traveler in the luxury sector, I am very confident that it will uh, come back and it's coming back. And I'm not surprised that Italians have been traveling within their own beautiful country. Can you give us some insight? Why is it that Italians are so passionate about all things um, Italian and especially luxury items like your fashion, your food, your fragrances? Why, why is that, do you think? Um, I think we need to go back a long way because we've been very blessed and we, you know, we've been surrounded by, by beauty since uh, the, the dawn of ages. So I think that has really helped as inspiration to every one of us to, you know, keep continue doing beautiful things. And because, uh, you know, we don't want to be lesser than people uh, uh, behind us. So there is this passion, there is this um, uh, I have to say, you know, it, it's funny, Italians are not a bit chaotic, we're not orderly, but because of that, I think we're very creative, we're very emotional, we're very passionate, we never stand still. And I think that has helped us in every sector, as you say, whether it's fashion, whether it's uh, food, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, design, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of what it's innate in us, but I think brought along uh, across the centuries you know it's a bit of a let's say darwin uh, darwinism uh, thought process but i'm pretty sure that there's a lot of that into it yeah look i do tend to agree and on that note can you let us into some some insights that tourists always ask me why don't italians have milk in their coffee after 11 what's that all about no well that that i think is like many other customs is also to do with a health factor because after 11 uh, or after you have a meal, if you have milk, it's bad and it slows down your, your digestion. So I think it's, uh, let's say, it's, uh, it's more related to that, how across the time we said, you know, coffee after, you know, 11 is just without milk. I think it's more to that. And, and what about standing up to have your coffee? That's also a bit strange to, to a lot of tourists. Uh, 
And I think that is very much about uh, our, again, our culture, our custom. To start with, breakfast was never a big thing in Italy. So it's more about getting the energy of the day and go. So I think the standing up is also part of our social interaction. You know, you're standing up at the bar, you're all close to each other and you have a quick chat and maybe you, you see somebody and, you know, and I think it, it's, it's a lot of that as well. It's a combination of, but we're always on the go and okay, let's get going. And then of course, so we have more time for the lunches, for the sit down and that's a totally different ball game. Hundred percent. Well, food is just so central to the Italian culture, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And tell us, at the Hotel Eden, you had a renovation and a refurbishment not all that long ago. Talk us through that. So we had a, a huge restoration. Dorchester we bought this hotel in uh, 2013, and of course, with the, the the knowledge and the idea already to uh, restore it and really give to the city of Rome one of, of its uh, finest hotels. I think the smart thing was really to live the hotel for a year and a half before just shutting it down so that we could understand it because it's a very historical hotel. It's been around for over 130 years. So we needed to know what was the essence because it was always a very uh, prominent hotel in the luxury, for the luxury travelers, whether it's uh, internationally also Italians or Romans, it was always a point of reference. So, you know, we knew we, we got something very special in our hands and we wanted to understand its soul, its magic, so to make sure not to lose that essence when we restructured. And then it was a full labor of love. So we really uh, wanted to make sure that uh, Rome was elevated and uh, we needed, uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that Rome was part of this hotel, not just by opening the windows because we're on top of the Pinchon Hill, so whenever you open, you see Rome and its landmarks. You see St. Peter's, you see the Quirinale, you see uh, the Pantheon. So Rome is really sitting at your feet. But also, when you open your eyes in the morning and the curtains are shut, you want to make sure, yes, I am in Rome. So basically, uh, that was the brief. And of course, respecting you know the heritage of the hotel. So the designers, they went around for four or five days in Rome bringing in some very gentle, subtle elements of Rome into the design. Some elements of the carpeting are, you know, uh, reproducing the marbles of Caracalla. Some marble floorings reflect the patterns inside the Pantheon. But it's done very, very gently. And across the hotel, whether it's some pictures in the room or some paintings about the Roman countryside, in this brief has a strong, strong character. And tell us about Italy. I mean, and what is the real Italy like compared to the Italy we see in the tourist brochures? Um, let's say, yes. I mean, I think there's, indeed there is these two pictures, but I feel that they are coming closer and closer and soon they will overlap. I mean, uh, once upon a time, yes, you know, Italy was sold uh, you know, it was Rome, it was, uh, uh, you know, Florence, it was Venice, it was nice and shiny, let's say. But now luxury travelers are asking a different experience. They want to really immerse themselves and they want to have an authentic experience. They want to discover uh, also other parts of Italy. So as I said, uh, these two pictures are really kind of very, very close because I, I see even with our clients when they come to Rome, they are also interested in going into, you know, seeing uh, quirky parts of the city. When they ask us, uh, you know, they say, where do you go for dinner? Where do you go out? Which is your favorite place? Because through our eyes, they want to discover uh, the city. Yeah. And, and how does a tourist, apart from asking you, find the more local restaurants? What's your advice? What's your insider knowledge? I mean, Rome is packed with a lot of touristy restaurants. The best way of this, talk to people. Even if you're in a, in a bar having a coffee, talk to the person next to you and say, hey, where do you go? And, uh, you know, so it, it's all like that. So even when organizing a trip, I always say to our guests, it says, you know, you need to have a master plan, but then leave some time for spontaneity, for discovering new places, you know, along the way uh, when they're thrown at you, because I, I, I truly believe in this. Absolutely. Can you share with us a couple of your favorite restaurants in Rome? Okay, well then, I would say 
I, I definitely Al Moro, which is a classic family run, has been in the family across generations. It's close to the Trevi Fountain, so people say, oh my God, it's touristy. But no, there's a lot of old, uh, you know, there's a lot of families, Roman families that go there. And uh, they're very in a quiet street, so unless you know it, you don't find it. Uh, you know, they're famous for their Al Moro uh, pasta, which is their own version of a carbonara pasta. But it's a different recipe that they won't disclose, but makes it much lighter. But then I like a lot uh, Al Cippo, which is close to where I live, but 10 minutes away from uh, from the hotel, but going away from the center of town, but again, is in a residential neighborhood of Rome, so there you will see Roma. And then uh, I personally like a lot Pierluigi, which is, you know, very famous for fish in Rome. And again, many Romans go there, but also you will find many visitors because a very popular restaurant in a lovely square, tables outside. But the list is endless, you know, it, there's a lot you can go to. And the nice things of Rome, you have a lot of little neighborhoods. So, you know, there's the Jewish ghetto, which you have a lot of nice restaurants like Nonna Besta or Da Gigetto. And then you have Trastevere, which has uh, other great little restaurants and great places. I like Tateo there. That's the thing with Rome. There's just, you need to talk to people and just discover. Um, but Luca, yeah. Luca, how do you keep the weight off with all that incredible food at home? I don't. No, but the good thing is that, uh, uh, you know, Italian cuisine is Mediterranean cuisine is, is well known. You know, it, it's good for you. It's, it's uh, the, the Mediterranean day diet is not as bad as other, as other diets. But if you do a lunch and dinner, it will have an effect on you. But what I tell to my guests, you're on vacation. You worry about it when you go back home. Yeah, well, I have to say the last time I was there, I had to buy shoes because I had my beautiful high heels. You really struggle to wear high heels in Rome to go to dinner. You have to get a taxi, right? It's hard to yeah. walk around. Definitely, definitely. Very true, very true. Yeah, a good and pair of sneakers. one of the first things that my wife discovered when we moved to Rome because she's, a, she's, a, she's from New York before we were living in London and then we moved to Rome. And that's why. So she had to change all her, all her shoes, you're right. I can relate. I can relate. Can we go to France for one moment where you started working for one of the world's most prestigious hotels, the Hotel Metropole in Monte Carlo. So how was that experience? I loved it. I have to say it was a great experience. Um, you know, Monte Carlo is a microcosmos. It's, it's really an intimate city. But what I found, uh, it was most welcoming. When I was in Monte Carlo a few years ago, I actually met Bono, the singer for the first time with Christy Turlington, which was pretty mm -hmm. fabulous. They were dining in a really casual pizza restaurant, Italian restaurant nearby. And he said hello and actually sent over a bottle of champagne, which was lovely. And I mean, you live a very, you know, highfalutin luxury sort of life in your role. Where do you go to escape it? And where, where are your holiday destinations? In the south of Sardinia, it's a, it's a beautiful resort called Forte Village which is geared for family, but so that is the fix. And then we like very much to change every year and try different experiences. So we never repeat because we're curious. We're in the world of travel and we want to see, but otherwise one vacation that I recall, the Aeolian Island. It's a beautiful archipelago mm -hmm. of the Northern coast of Sicily and and we stayed in Salina, which is a very, very petit island in a very quaint hotel, family run, beautiful. And this island is in the center of all the archipelago. So every day we rented a self-drive uh, speedboat and every day we went to a different island. So, you know, and then we parked the boat, we had a little walk, we had lunch by the restaurant by the sea, then we just sit there. But it was simple because in that simplicity, I was with a t-shirt and a pair of trousers for 10 days, but it was just magic. You know, the smells, the perfumes, the sea is just, uh, that was really priceless. Gorgeous. And what's the number one place on your list that you haven't been yet? I think there's plenty. Okay, one, one that definitely interests me to go is Istanbul. And then Israel, I would like to visit Israel as well. Many, you know, and but that, that is, there's so much. The world is, 
is uh, is so big. But let's say my the the two that come that come to my mind right now are are these. And what's your favorite Dorchester hotel apart from Hotel Eden, of course? They're all different in their own right. You know, they they have their own personality, their own soul, their own reason. It's a very difficult question. I think maybe one hotel that I can say I like going back and back is uh, the Cowes Park. Uh, oh. It's in the English countryside. And maybe because I live in a city and so I want a different, a little break. But it's gorgeous. The grounds are beautiful. It's it's run perfectly by Zoe, who is a great general manager and colleague. And it's just the perfect balance. It's it's quirky. It's fun. It's relaxing. And it's just and I love English countryside. So that's definitely a place, uh, you know, that I, I love going back and back. But I have to uh, agree with you. I took my daughter when she was about the age that your daughter is now. And it was just magnificent. We went horse riding together there, which is, of course, one of the highlights of Coweth Park. And they have, I'm sure you remember, a painting on the wall of a white horse that moves. And it's just stuck in both of our memories. We'd really had the most wonderful mother-daughter weekend you could ever have in that just beautiful property. I totally agree. Ben, ben, you know, magnificent. As I said, they're all great, but Coweth Park definitely it's a, it's a place that we enjoy going whenever the time. Now it's impossible to go because, they're so busy, so good for them. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So, look, it's been wonderful talking to you, Luca. We really appreciate you coming into us from Rome. And we ask all of our guests, where to from here for you? The next trip we're planning is, uh, is Paris. Uh, not too sure of the Plaza Atene or the Maurice. Let's see uh, who will be kind enough to host us, but definitely on top of the Eiffel Tower. I've got to say, both of those um, Dorchester properties are gorgeous. But whatever you do, you ha have to have a drink at the bar at Le Maurice. So I don't know if you've ever done that, but that is just one of my favourite places in the world yes. to have a drink. I completely agree. Uh, I love the aura of the place, the, the way you feel, the coziness. It's a special place. Yeah. Indeed. And well done. You know our hotels pretty well. So you're very well travelled, uh, Rene. Bravo. Definitely. I just ha I haven't been to Italy and seen yours yet because COVID has prevented us, but the borders are opening here soon. So hopefully we get exactly. to meet and I get to see the Hotel Eden soon, which I would love. Bene. Keeping my finger crossed and we're waiting for you. Wonderful. Grazie and mille. All of, uh, the Australian the travellers as well, once again, we really miss you. Oh, thank you. And we have actually a big audience in America and also in um, the UK. And I know they particularly like coming to Italy. That's why we're really keen to talk to you in Rome today. So, you know, grazie. <laughs> Perfect. Grazie mille. E arrivederci a presto allora. Arrivederci. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe here and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for regular travel updates. You can also hear our episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.